Thank you, Aviram. Very uh, encouraging. Compared to last year, I see that lots have been done. And uh, we are very happy for the information. And when we have a problem, we either use this uh, phone number or call Superman. I like the idea. So um, our next speaker is Guy Philippe Goldstein. And uh, he's a senior advisor for PwC France and uh, the author of Babylon Minute Zero. And uh, he's also a strategic advisor for a, a VC capital that uh, is uh, investing mainly in uh, cyber and fintech companies. And uh, Guy will present himself and uh, s'il vous plaît. Thank you. And, uh, hello, everybody, and, and very happy to be uh, back again at this uh, second session on the cyber insurance after last year, where uh, last year we kind of uh, ended up on a picture of the development of cyber insurance, where you know, as uh, some figures already stated here, that it would end up perhaps at a big market of 85 billion dollars. Meanwhile, because, you know, as Mark Anderson stated, software is eating the world, everything becomes digital, so the cyber risk is everywhere, and you can even think that any insurance policy without a cyber insurance clause might be very quickly meaningless. So, your grandstanding statements which would, that we should all believe, but uh, beyond that, uh, one key thing, and I'm a bit pissed at Ram because he stole my fire, uh, starting on his talk, but uh, this statement just uh, last month uh, from a very knowledgeable guy, uh, Warren Buffett, that basically stated that, uh, and, and you can see him on his talk online, that, well, we're doing cyber insurance because uh, everybody's doing cyber insurance because there's a uh, competition, so we need to do it, but basically uh, we don't know what we're doing. And uh, you know, as the states, anybody that tells you that they know in some actual way, actual ways that uh, they have a general experience of what's going on, and uh, they don't know, <laughs> basically. So it's an interesting place because uh, we we hear and we understand there's a big, big, big need for that. But on the other end, in terms of the actual actuarial model, uh, we're still a bit uh, long shot to, to get there. So um, uh, when we try then to understand the issues around the actual cost of cyber incidents for corporations, then we have also a wide range of evaluation. Uh, we may have uh, the guys at IBM, Poneman Institute, that everywhere, every year, are going to set up that, you know, say, data leak, for example, are going to cost this and that around $4 million. And then we may have actual people from uh, run corporation that say, no, it's not uh, 3.6 million, it's 0 0.2 million. Okay, so by, by, by the way, if you're a big corporation, both of those figures are not that important, okay? Um, then we will have other type of studies, not on the screen here, but say people at Lloyd's that, is, that are going to come up with, say, there's a big cyber um, systemic event, and then you are going to lose, I don't know, like 50 or 100 billion dollars. And again, for large corporation, 100 billion dollars, you know, they don't care because it's just way too big. That goes on the plate of the state at this level. So then it, it begs a question to a company, okay, uh, two million, I don't care, 100 billion, I don't care, so what's really at stake for me? So um, we started to, to run with PwC France a very preliminary study, and there'll be further on that, but what we try to see is, okay, uh, if I took, say, public listed companies, because we do have information of public listed uh, companies, and we see a uh, sample, still very small, of 30 cyber incidents, data leaks, some may be due to criminal activities, some may be due to national state things, such as NotPetya, which may be a bit of a different situation. But, you know, we start there, we regroup all of that, and we, we ask ourselves, okay, does that have a material impact on total enterprise value? You know, the thing that really, you know, alarms and wakes up the board is stock price and your know, overall value of the company. Is it going to go down significantly, materially, <laughs> or not, basically? And even there, you know, when you look back at a couple of years ago, things were not that clear. 
You, you'd had the issues such as you know what happened with Target or J.P. Morgan, and basically the stock price didn't move, move much. Okay, and even there was one paper from Harvard Business Review in the early part of 2015 that just stated, well, you know, maybe it's still very complex. The analysts on Wall Street they don't get it. We don't get it, maybe. So it's still very hard to tell. So again, what we try to, to do, uh, and with my friends at PwC France, is okay, let's, let's have a bigger sample first. And then let's try to also see the scope, not in the first 5, 10, 15 trading days, but you know, have a wider range, you know, say over one year, okay, see what happens. And when we did that, uh, and again, it's preliminary, and, and there'll be further studies on that because it's a small sample. But when we did that, then we saw a couple of interesting things. First, again, you look at uh, after announcement of cyber incident, and you look over the next 12 months. So you have basically three groups of companies that pop up. Uh, a, a, a significant group, you know, about a bit more than one third that are not going to be affected by, the, by what happens. But then slightly about two thirds that are going to be affected. And among them, one group, a quarter, they are going to take a dive, but then, and we'll see a bit further into that, they are going to rebound. And that's an important thing. But then also another important group, and actually the largest one of all those here, 40%, that are going to take a dive, and they are really going to take a dive. And you're going to see after 12 months that it's still down there. So that has mean that indeed for boards, you know, as it's been stated, it's been now implemented in different type of regulation. I have what's being done in, in, in Israel and the importance, you know, being top down and you know telling the boards this is an important matter. Well, it is an important matter for boards because indeed it will materially affect your total enterprise value. So going a bit into the different groups, first group, the one that is going to take a uh, dive down. Well, you see on average that over the next uh, 12 months, if you see 250 training days, so it's about one year later, they are about uh, minus 20% down on average versus stock price before uh, the announcement. And key element here is that and you have example, for example, of Tok Tok in the UK. You're very much really affected because also uh, you have a bad track record, and in a way, it's not necessarily the gravity of the incident itself, but what it does reveal on the quality of the cybersecurity in the company. Again, best example is what happened with Tok Tok in October 2015, because the data leak, you know, I think, uh, counted for only 20,000 accounts, not that big, but you know, there was already three previous issues. And it was revealed that some stuff was not encrypted as it should be. So it really revealed that actually the actual quality was bad. And that's one of the reasons they paid the price on the stock exchange. The other interesting bit is the resilient group. Okay, they're about to the quarter of the company. And what you see here is that actually in the first, say, 10 trading days, 20 trading days, at start, they are also going to take the same direction as the bad group, the structurally weakened group. But then, in a time window of about two months, they will rebound. Now, the interesting thing is that actually, then you can see that you need two months to observe that, and perhaps that if they don't rebound after two months, then they're really done. What we see, and, and, and basically, so this is very important because we're dealing here with resilient companies. And as has been mentioned uh, in cybersecurity all, all across the world, we're moving from just defensive posture to actually resilient posture. We know that we're going to take a hit, so how are we going to rebound? And there'll be, uh, with PwC France research, on trying to better understand the drivers of uh, how and why do you rebound. But a couple of interesting things is that, well, you can mention what's been actually stated by the guy at Maersk. You need a very agile organization. So a bit of soft skill here, which may be hard today to measure, but there's something certainly at play. 
Another thing which is easier to be seen and has nothing to do with IT is having a strong board. And one great thing to show to markets that you're taking things seriously is to sacrifice a CEO or a CTO or both and you know, send them to the walls. Uh, but you know, this way you prove that you're very serious as board and that indeed you take matter at the utmost important level. And then, of course, there's all the element of uh, external, internal communication, which are very important. Okay? So, uh, yeah, you know, the, 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 there is actually executive implications of having a fuck up in, in your company. Uh, <laughs> one interesting bit, I'd say, in that study is that here, what you, so again, to sum up, bad crisis management guys, they lose minus 20%. Good crisis management guys, they come up at the end at plus 7%. Okay, now, this is what we saw there, okay, we don't see it actually, but it goes up plus 7% for the good guys after 12 months. What is interesting is when you compare that to older studies, with regards to reputational risk, nothing to do with cyber. This is coming from 2000, a study by researcher at uh, Oxford University. And a bit of the same results, actually. They showed that your bad, uh, they, they call it the inefficient crisis manager, you ended up after 12 months trading day, 12 months at minus 50%. Or your good manager, you end up uh, after 12 months at plus 7%. So very comparable to our preliminary results uh, with regards to uh, cyber. And you know, things which deals indeed with reputation. And indeed, uh, reputation is, seems to be one of the key elements. Uh, and, and again, when you try to understand the different uh, level of, of different drivers, as we mentioned, the state of preparation with cyber risk, the quality of incident response, so very, very important. Evidently, the exposure to digitalization of business activities, because though software is hitting the world, it does not happen at the same pace for any type of business, but at the end of the day, we'll all end up there. And also an element which is business profile, which has nothing to do with cyber, but if you're a monopoly, okay, well, actually, you can absorb lots of shocks and you will not have much issues at the end of the day. We had just one example, which is not exactly in a cyber uh, incident, but what happened with Facebook. Basically, Facebook is a monopoly. Whenever you want to take out or get out of Facebook, you stuck to Facebook. You know, it's like in Goldfather uh, uh, 3, just when you thought you get out, you know, they, they pull me back in. So you're always pulled into Facebook. Um, and indeed, the stock price did rebound because it is a monopoly. So those elements um, of, of business profiling are also important in understanding what's at stake for a company. And there are a couple of examples here. Um, uh, I would say canonical examples of companies that really took a big bath, uh, Heartland Payment Services, Global uh, uh, Payment Solutions, I believe, back uh, in 2009, 2010. There are payment processors that were working with a lot of competitors for a couple of very important clients. Once Visa, for example, stated, well, I'm not be able to work with Heartland Payment Services, then the company lost 40% in stock price. So again, nothing to do with cyber, it's really your business uh, situation. Uh, a couple of uh, last points here is that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's still an element of exposure to digitalization and different type of business are not affected the same ways. And you see that this is another study actually by Oxford Economics, just looking at the first few days after announcement, but again you see you're in finance, uh, as a typo, you're in finance, you're much more exposed than if you're in retail or hospitality. Uh, and also, again, uh, the fact that as time goes by, <coughs> sorry for the voice, as time goes by, the, 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 the understanding of exposure to digital becomes even bigger. So remember, there was about 37% of companies unaffected. A big <coughs> Part of those incidents were actually older incidents. It's very possible that moving forward, that part actually shrank. Okay, conclusion or intermediary conclusions, and then there'll we'll be conclusion. What does it mean? Uh, a, a key element of what we call cyber risk is actually reputational risk, 
which has been covered somehow by some insurance companies, but that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. It's not an on-the-shelf product. Another element, because of the importance of risk management and being a good uh, response uh, manager, is actually the importance of having assistance, which is coming in many uh, different uh, cyber insurance policy. And there is actually a very important place here to be played with assistance. We still have um, the issue with regards to moral hazard that we hear a lot uh, with regards to sub-insurance. You take sub-insurance policy for this type of new emerging risk, so then people are going to think, oh, I am covered. Well, you're not covered at all. Uh, you need to move forward. Now, the interesting thing is that, as we mentioned, one element is the state of preparation. So perhaps if you can do better valuation, you can do this type of dynamic pricing that you see in other type of uh, insurance policy. The better you are at preparing yourself, the lower your, uh, um, pr your premiums. Still, uh, moving into a digital environment, which is uh, moving very, very, very fast, and again, to rephrase what uh, uh, Warren Buffett stated, there are no actual actuarial models and we may have to change a bit things and perhaps be more, you know, build those uh, data networks and uh, very sensitive to what has been done in Israel to try to collect the data by phone or by some other ways. Because really it's getting the match data for our time period to try to understand uh, what's going on. Last point. Uh, again, going to the introduction by Ram on the important issue of NotPetya, which is this sea changing, uh, very important one for many diplomatic reasons, also what you mentioned about the fact that there is for the first time a very clear political attribution done on February 15 on Russia. So we have actually different type of cyber risk. We have cyber risk that comes with, say, criminality or traditional criminality or criminality switching to, to the digital realm. Um, and here we may have all the issues of good management and stuff. Uh, they are uh, cyber insurance policy may re apply once we have better models, which is still a big uh, fit. And then we have another issue, which is nation state stuff, okay? Uh, which looks like more uh, natural catastrophe to some respect, but uh, for political reasons. There perhaps, we're not there yet, but perhaps there may be a, a determination that we have some sort of cyber risk which is more in the regular criminality, whatever you call regular actually, and then some of the cyber risk which is related to a uh, nation state, and there we may expect, as we, we see, for example, state intervening when you have major catastrophe, we may expect actually state uh, intervening even financially when you have this type of, of issue. Uh, mind you, uh, the fact that we have an insurance market, uh, final point, the fact that we have an insurance market where we don't have the actual proper model, it has already happened. Uh, the best example is what happened with uh, uh, climate insurance and the, uh, the natural catastrophe of hurricanes. And prior to 1992 in the US, prior to Hurricane Andrew, oh, a couple of models, some people were doing very advanced stuff in terms of um, uh, scientific development, but it was not used by the uh, insurers. And then Hurricane Andrew happened, the whole market collapsed actually, and it had to be rebuilt, and it had to be rebuilt by using more advanced models. Perhaps that's also where we are with regards to uh, uh, cyber insurance. Just, let's just hope that we rebuild or build up the uh, market without a Hurricane Andrew type catastrophe. Thank you.